Thank you very much for coming, everybody. Um, my project is called The Sounds of Silence, Unpacking Perspectives of Silence in a World of Sound. Um, my project is basically an essay which I'm writing, a research essay, and I'm doing this because I am contemplating doing a Master's of Research here at the uni. And um, I just want to say thank you very much for coming, and um, Nibblies will be provided at the end, so, thank, so please stick around. Um, and also, if I pronounce any words wrong, please excuse that. There are some Indian, Japanese, and even English words that I don't know how to pronounce. Definition of silence, according to the Oxford Dictionaries, is a complete absence of sound, which was followed by the example of sirens pierce the silence of the night. What an interesting place to start an investigation about the substance of silence with the notion that, in the English language, we perceive silence as a complete absence, a nothingness, so to speak. Yet, following a definition of nothingness, we are presented with the scenario of the night being an accurate example of this silence. Is the night, therefore, a nothingness whereby <coughs> excuse me, the sounds of the night do not actually exist? Or could this definition suggest that our ideas about silence are confused, misguided and loose? Is the night not filled with the sounds of night creatures, distant traffic perhaps, ticking clocks, the breeze or our breath? It is this perspective, the idea that silence is a nothingness, which I wish to undo. The mass conception we hold of silence is misleading, and to demonstrate this I will explore the role and function silence plays in music and through exploring the ways in which silence is viewed from religious, cultural, scientific and philosophical perspectives. Through this research, I have convinced myself that silence is anything but a nothingness. nothingness. Silence is a space of abundant potential. It is a measure of time that is filled with unlimited sounds that is either very soft or beyond our hearing range, but never non-existent. It is a space for the comprehension of sound, and yet, ironically, silence itself is a thing that we cannot fully comprehend. Its mystique is truly intriguing and is the reason why I have chosen to explore it at such depth. This essay will unpack the different perspectives of silence and perhaps cause you to question whether silence, at least in the way we conceive of it, actually exists. Defining sound and silence. One way in which silence is used in music is for the functional purposes of being an auditory cue. Silence can be conceived of as a way of framing the sounds of music, much like the frame of an artwork. The frame that surrounds a painting, for example, establishes to the viewer where the artwork ends and where it begins. If we choose to perceive music as a form of art, we can easily apply this logic. Michael Goodard, author of Resonances and Noise in Contemporary Music, demonstrates how silence exists as a framework for music, and this is a quote. The presence of silence is the key parameter of the musical frame. Music is marked as such by an absence of auditory st stimulation, which is present before the commencement of a performance. The, music, the musical frame can be placed in the context of a concert hall. People arrive, do as they do before filling into the hall and finding their seat. There is a pause for silence right before the concert is to begin. Some could also say that this also occurs between movements at the end of the performance and before an applause. The space of anticipation and silence is the essence of music's frame. However, we must not forget that silence can also play a role within the piece as well, framing the sections of a music, creating drama and creating a space. Due to its nature, silence, just as much as music has been, is also considered in terms of language. We often speak of music in terms of narrative, phrase, question and answer, and so on. If space is required between a musical question and answer, and it is in order to distinguish that it is both a calling and a response, then silence become this, becomes the space for comprehension of the heard and the anticipation of what is to be heard. Much like that of a sentence, sounds and words must be heard and then gathered in the mind. The silence is then applied to decode these sounds into meaning and comprehension. Therefore, it seems that sound and silence cannot be without one another.
conferring that silence plays an important, often underappreciated and perhaps overlooked role in our comprehension of all sound. Sounds of the abyss. Does silence in the way we defined it, a nothingness, a vacancy and a complete absence of sound actually exist? John Cage believes the room is not silent, the that the room is filled with coughs, shuffles, creaks, whispers, and so forth. He goes on to say that silence is nothing more or less than the absence of organised sound, and the absence of organised sound may or may not be intended as music, or interpreted as music for that matter. Cage, who is famous for challenging and exploring the role of silence, does so through his contemporary music piece, four minutes and 33, a piece where he sits at the piano quietly and does not play it. Upon much confusion and much inqu inquiry about this piece, he has this to say. Since the sounds were just sounds, this gave people hearing them the chance to be people, centered within themselves where they actually are, not off artificially in the distance as they are accustomed to be trying to figure out what it is being said by some artist by means of sounds. Finally, I said that the purpose of this purposelessness music would be achieved if people learned to listen. Then what they listened, that when they listened, they might discover that they preferred, sorry, preferred the sound of everyday life to the ones they would presently hear in a musical program. That that was all right as far as I was concerned. Somewhat agreeing with Cage is another experimental musician, R. Murray Schaefer, who believes silence is not an absence. Schaefer believes it is an eternal sound plane upon which sound exists. And this is a quote from him. All sounds we hear are imperfect. For a sound to be totally free of onset distortion, it would have to have been initiated before our lifetime. If it were also continued after our death, so that we knew no interruption of it, then we would comprehend it as being perfect. But a sound initiated before our birth, continued unabated and unchanging throughout our lifetime and extending beyond our death, would be conceived by us as silence. Can silence be heard? Yes. If we could extend our consciousness outward to the universe and to eternity, we could hear silence. The secret hieroglyph of the universe is revealed. Number becomes audible and flows down, filling the receiver with tones and light. Perhaps, it, um, perhaps silence is simply a singular, singular sound that we hear. Perhaps silence is simply a singular sound um, that we hear, only we cannot localise it as it has not stopped in order for us to comprehend it as an individual sound. So perhaps silence is a single sound that our ears pick out shades of. The concept of silence or a singular sound being key in understanding ourselves and our reality is not a new concept and has been explored at depth in many cultures through their own musical styles and religions. The musical term, Ich on Jubitsu, associated with the Japanese bamboo flute, the Sakuachi, suggests that the universe is explored in a single sound. A single sound is only one way to attain Buddhahood. beliefs about silence. To begin with, I will share a quote about um, the Indian concept of Nada Brahma, which is also translated to the sound god, or the sound is god and god is sound. In India, music has held this unique value as being an all-embracing principle that evolves order out of chaos, that pulsates in every form of life so that the whole phenomenal world becomes just an outpouring of music meant emanating from Brahma's nada, the soundless world. The white ray of the sun can spread out into colours of the rainbow, and these very colours can be gathered together again into a pristine white ray. May it not be that the myriad of sounds of music are the result of the disintegration of a single world note, the nada of Brahman. Nikki Lucif. Uh, from Silent Music and the Eternal Silence, elaborates on this quote by stating, 
From this quote, we are invited to consider human's music relationship with the divine unmanifested form. Since all human music becomes, in effect, an eternal offering to the celestial silence. For, and excuse me for this pronunciation, Sanjendava, self-aware intelligence, or in other terms, the individual soul, can never keep an identity without a physical vehicle. Just as we cannot see light itself, but only the colours into which it divides, nor can we hear the soundless primordial note that is the source of all heard music. What these quotes are attempting to highlight is that silence is a source from which all sound comes from. This can be a hard concept to grasp. How can sound possibly emerge from a place of no sound? In many non-Western societies, silence is very much a part of the cultural ritual and practice and is of daily recognition and appreciation. The Japanese concept of ma, formulated by Takimatsu, who discovered its aesthetic for, of time and space, there is something in the pauses that has to do with eternity. Ma, or negative space, is very much a practice in Japanese lifestyle, for example, in their architecture and in their song, including negative space or silent sections within a composition. Both sound and silence in traditional Japanese music are diverse and significant. A higher quality of silence is infinitely able to enhance a higher sound quality, and therefore, sound and silence are equal.